Welcome back to another episode of Mystery Garage. In today's episode, we talk about Stepchild. It's been a little while since we've seen it. You know, what's going on with the project? Where are we? Uh, motor's obviously still behind me here in the corner. Um, let's get an update. Let's get up, everybody up to speed of where it is, what's going on. Also got some other things to drop to you this episode. So before we waste any more time, let's get to it. Welcome back to another episode of Mystery Garage. Had a lot of people over the last couple of days asking me, where did Stepchild go? What's going on? What's happening? Um, here it is. <laughs> There's been a few updates. I want to keep you guys in the loop as we start going. Um, you know, lots of little things happening. Also, like I said, there's a couple other things I want to show you or get into this episode and we'll take it from there. So let's get into it. So last time we left off on this project, we talked about uh, paint. So um, there's a couple things that are kind of in store for paint. I was really hoping that the COVID-19 situation in my area would start to loosen up. There was talk, you know, a week or two ago, about two weeks ago, of possibly reopening the border. But in the last two weeks, it's actually gone the other way. Just like many areas of the world right now, we're starting to see what they call a third wave or whether it's fourth wave, I don't know, it all gets mixed up. Nevertheless, things have gotten a little bit worse and actually lockdowns or our uh, local scenario has gotten a little tighter, not better. So that being said, uh, having this car go down to the United States, down to my buddy in Washington is looking less and less likely. So I've started to really start to try and source somebody locally. Haven't come up with something yet that's solid. Um, got a few leads for sure, but paint is definitely in the very near future. I was kind of delaying a little bit, hoping I could get it down to my buddy, but like I said, it's probably not gonna happen. So the realistic plan is to find somebody locally to start hacking on this car pretty soon. Like I've said, I've done all the body work, all the metal work on a car, but the car does need full blocking, um, you know, block sanding and leveling and all that sort of stuff. So I'm gonna leave that to professional because I don't wanna create a wavy paint job. Yes, I could do an in garage paint job, but I've wanted this car a certain way for so long as a dream car of mine. I really don't wanna half out. <laughs> I don't wanna uh, do this at a lesser level than uh, I would really like for my own dream car. Yeah, I could get out there and learn how to paint it and all that sort of stuff myself. And maybe I will do that on a different project, but not this one. This car, this project isn't meant for me uh, to be the painter on. I'm gonna learn on some other car, not this one. So that's where we are with the paint. There is a little bit more uh, body work. I do wanna uh, shave this trim. Uh, I prefer a trimless car, it looks simpler. So we're gonna go through shaving the trim and all that sort of stuff right before we send it for paint. Um, but I really kinda wanna find out uh, you know, where I might take it for paint or solidify that decision and then get it ready. Because obviously that paint shop will also need a little bit of lead time too, meaning they're probably working on other people's projects right now. I'm gonna have a little bit of leeway until they can accept this project. So we'll have a bit of time once I confirm the paint job, figure out the plan to quickly button up the bodywork and get it out of here and, uh, and that sort of thing. Once this car is out of here, uh, we're gonna be taking the suspension from Project White Rabbit, or not suspension, sorry, uh, the braking components and some of the suspension components and using it for this car. So while this car's in the paint shop, we'll end up um, taking some parts off of Stepchild, or sorry, uh, off White Rabbit, getting it ready and sorting all that out. So when this car comes back from paint, we're ready to start throwing the car all back together. Everything will work really quickly from that point on. We'll really start to see this car come together because paint, once paint is done, you know, we'll have the windows put back in and then we can really start just throwing parts at it and go from there. But that does lead to where do we stand on the engine? A lot of you guys have been asking, you know, where did the ABF build go? How can we stop that? We were making some pretty good progress on it and all of a sudden it kind of just disappeared. Well, to be honest with you, you guys are doing all this stuff with me in real time. As I've tried to do as much pre-planning on this project as humanly possible, um, I've hit some points in time where some of my planning has slightly changed. And I'll kind of explain that a little bit. So everybody knows, I've said it many times, I've been working with Dave from TDC Shop. Dave is fantastic. He is a infinite guru with knowledge I couldn't even imagine. Like even sometimes when we get into some conversations, uh, he has to dumb it down for me to fully understand. I ask him to, I said, hey man, you're, you're outside of my wheelhouse there. Can you dumb it down so I can understand a little bit of where we're headed with this? So when we were talking about what could we do 
for the best management available um, that's not necessarily a third party thing. Like I don't want to go to Mega Squirt or anything weird like that. I'd like to stick with as much Volkswagen standard stuff as I could. Um, so we started talking about, well, what can we do for management for carbureted ABF build? And what we decided to do, or what he kind of uh, suggested, and I really think it's a great idea, um, was to go to a Mark IV management and we can actually even use uh, coil packs rather than a distributor. So that changed the game significantly for this engine and where we were. And I, I think that's exactly where we're going. For him, it's a bit of a developmental thing. He hasn't um, fully worked everything out for that style of build yet, but between him and I, we're gonna do it together and we're gonna actually make this more or less uh, a prototype for that type of ignition system. If we can pull that off, or if Dave can pull it off, it's got really nothing to do with me. If he can pull it off, which I think he can, actually I know he can, um, it'll make this thing, the tunability of this motor, incredible. We'll be able to run a Mark IV ECU, we'll use coil packs, maybe uh, uh, 1AT or um, R8 or something to that effect, and we'll be able to tune the ignition curve as well as understand the fuel curve on this motor uh, through O2 sensors and through the ECU that will make this motor infinitely tunable or really easily tunable. You don't have to study any kind of third party um, engine management system or anything like that. It's keeping everything basically Volkswagen. That sort of stuff makes me extremely excited. Anybody can go out and get you know, a Haltech or you know, I highly recommend for Haltech for standalones though if we're having that conversation, but all these different kinds of types of standalones out there and it, the funny thing is whenever you look at somebody selling uh, uh, an older build or an older car and the uh, engine management system has been superseded by so many different versions, um, it kind of leaves that car in the dinosauric era. And I want to make sure that doesn't happen with this. So sticking with a, a Volkswagen uh, ECU is an awesome opportunity for us to keep it that way. So anyways, that kind of stuff really excited me and I was like, man, let's do it. Um, so right now what I've done is I've packaged up the Mark IV wiring harness, the Mark IV uh, 2 liter ECU, as well as the ABA distributor. Uh, I've sent that off uh, to Dave just very recently and he's going to take all that stuff. He's going to need a little bit of time to, to work it all out, but uh, I said that's okay. Take the time whatever time you need. But what that means for this engine is we're going to actually change some of the concept. Originally I was going to drive this engine off of the original uh, 16 valve distributor. So since we're changing now to coil packs, it changes the way I've designed or built this bottom end. So because uh, you guys were following this whole build in real time, we've now changed what the plan is with the motor. So now we're gonna have to go back and change up some things. I would like Dave to solidify, at least conceptually, the fact that we're 110% doing it this way. And then we're gonna have to go back to the block and make some changes. I'm gonna actually pull out the intermediate shaft because currently it's a 16 valve, because we're gonna put the distributor back in the block with no, no wires on top, but it's gonna be the crank trigger. Um, so it's gonna be able to be, the distributor is gonna be basically deadheaded. We're gonna make some custom cover for it, and it's gonna be able to pick up uh, basically the hollow effect of where the crank trigger is and that sort of stuff. And he's gonna work all that into it. But in order to do that, we're gonna have to put the uh, ABA intermediate shaft back in. We then have to put back in a brand new ABA oil pump because now again the drive situation that we set up for this motor is no longer 16 valve it's back to ABA so we'll have to put the uh, a brand new uh, oil pump back into it we're gonna have to put the intermediate shaft back into it we're gonna have to reverse some of the 16 valve stuff that we did that being said since I'm gonna be reopening the bottom end I didn't put any uh, ARP uh, um, rod bolts in I, what I did do is just new factory stuff I'd like to now put ARP stuff in it since we're gonna be reopening it up again. So this will all come probably pretty soon. We'll get back into a full engine build. Like I said, the head's done um, so we can start throwing the motor back together. But with the changes to the bottom end that were happening, I hit the stall button because I really didn't want to continue the progress of bolting the head on and then have to pull it all back together, back apart, sorry. And uh, I couldn't be any more excited for where this is headed. So stay tuned for that. When we do figure out exactly what the, the whole uh, wiring program is gonna be for this engine, I will do as best as I can an in-depth episode of what we've done. So that way everybody can catch up with how we wired this engine, how we managed it, and what the whole plan is with it. But essentially this is gonna be a tunable uh, carved engine, which I think is super awesome. So if we can do that, awesome. So. I do have to give Dave some time. So again, that stuff has been sent off. 
Uh, once he says, yeah, we're good to go, I'm gonna go ahead and start making changes to this bottom end, we'll slap the head on it and continue the engine build. Um, super excited for that, but I just wanna give you guys the update of why we're kind of dragging our heels on that a little bit, or why I am, sorry, is just because I wanna make sure uh, that I don't start building up the engine and have to take it all apart again. We've already done a little bit of that, so I wanna go back on that um, and fix that up in one smooth motion. So, uh, more of the story, ABF engine build, Still here, still ready to go, still you know, moving ahead, but because there were some mechanical changes that we're gonna have to make, we're gonna have to dial back and go backwards a little bit before we move ahead. So I just wanted you guys to fill you in on that. So now I've got brought you guys up to speed on where we are with the paint, what's going on with the paint situation of this car. Like I said, I just need to solidify some things now that I know I have to paint this car locally. I already have a few leads working on those, uh, as well as you guys know now where we are on the engine build. And know that I'm not stalling on the engine build either. Uh, those things are moving ahead, but there's got to be a few things that happen uh, beforehand. That being said, there's been a ton of action on this channel in the last little while from other people's project cars to uh, my own project cars. White Rabbit, you can't see, it's slightly off camera here. We've done a few episodes on that. Lots of stuff happening on the channel, and that takes a ton of organization ahead of time. I need to plan for parts, I need to plan for content. Um, I have other people's cars that are going to be coming into the mystery garage pretty soon. Lots of really cool stuff in store. And I can't explain to you enough how much I pre appreciate everybody who's joined this channel recently. There's a ton of great uh, content we're you know, going to be putting out. There's a ton of great comments and feedback and, and questions and all that sort of stuff. Thank you guys for getting involved with this channel. Thank you for making it what it is today. Uh, I'm having a great deal of fun with this, but it's also extremely challenging for me which is what makes this energizing and fun is to try and always stay one or two steps ahead to ensure we continue with the content flow, continue with the information, continue with um, having things new and exciting. I don't wanna have the channel kind of hit a stall point where nothing cool is happening anymore. I wanna continue on that path. So uh, let's get to work on a little bit of things today. Um, we're gonna do another episode, introduce a new project to the garage for our Sunday episodes, all that kind of stuff. So lots of it, staying to, stay, stay tuned for a lot of that. And uh, I hope to bring you on a little bit of a, a future look today of what we're gonna be seeing more of in the future. So uh, let's stay tuned for that. Okay, so well, uh, what do I have on the go? Well, um, I wouldn't say it's a goal. Goal is the wrong word, but I've had a, um, a target for the channel that I think it would be really cool if I could get one of every kind of Mark I on the Mark I platform of choices. Truck, Jetta, uh, I have two slick tops right now, um, stuff like that. It would be cool if I could achieve everything that's available. Because then for a lot of people on the platform, uh, you guys are watching the channel, liking what you see, hopefully you can relate to at least, at least one of the builds based on uh, the car, and then it would be cool to have every or most of the engine platforms available. Currently we have a VR6, uh, turbo diesel, a 1.6 turbo diesel. Um, everybody knows I have purchased a 1.8 liter for a future build. And then we're doing the 16 valve on carb. So we're kind of trying, trying to cover the whole engine range, so to speak, of swappable engines. Down the, down the road, doing an okay, uh, 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 07k swap would be cool too, or even a VR5 like uh, Christian's doing right now. Something like that would be down the road, but right now covering off the major ones, 16 valve, uh, turbo diesel option, um, doing a uh, VR6 and then a 1.8T would be cool. Um, so everybody knows I have the 1.8T. I've currently been searching for quite some time to find a platform car that I don't currently own that I could put the 1.8T in. I have right now a car that could eventually be a parts car, but I, it was originally purchased as being the 1.8T swap car that I haven't showed you guys on the channel. If you follow me on Instagram, I dropped a hint a while back. Um, I'm not a hundred percent on that car because just because it would be cool to get like a special edition or some sort of unique car um, rather than just a base model or whatever. So I've kind of been on the hunt. Anyways, I've found one. There's one that kind of fits the category. I'm not going to tell you what kind of car it is, but it is a Mark one. And I currently haven't worked on one of these on the channel yet. Um, I've had them around the channel as a hint, but I haven't specifically started one as a project car. So uh, I'm going to go look at this car today. I'm going to see what it's all about. I don't know how much I can film. I probably can't film much because I don't like walking into somebody's private house with my camera on. It's not appropriate. Um, so I'm going to go look at the car. 
I'm gonna gauge whether this is the one for the channel. And if it is, we might have ourselves a mystery garage project car that is just for this channel, not somebody else's, not a friend of mine's car, or, or somebody who, a viewer's car or whatever. It'll be a channel project car for the 18T swap. Uh, I think showing you guys and doing it together, I personally haven't done a 18T swap from start to finish. I've helped people finish their projects. I've been involved in, in parts of swaps and that sort of thing, but I've never been, done my full own 180 Mark one swap. Um, so I think that would be really cool for the channel. It'd also be cool to do it in a platform car that I currently don't have as an option. Um, so that's where we stand right now. I'm gonna go look at this car and I'll come right back and tell you what I thought about it. It's a bit of a jaunt, but I'm not gonna take you guys with me. Like I said, I'll just come back and I'll summarize whether this car is gonna work for the channel and we've just purchased something or it wasn't as advertised and it's not gonna work. So let's get to it. <laughs> well, uh, it's a few days later now, and uh, I went and looked at the car, and I liked it. We made a deal on it. Um, it was actually quite a bit under what he was asking for the car, but I thought this is the car for the channel. Funny enough, though, is between now and today of me going to get the car, uh, which I've already done, by the way, um, is... I might have had a change of heart and I want you guys to be a part of this decision because I'm okay with it either way. Here's the thing. The car that I got, which I'll show you in the next episode, it won't be today, but this car is pretty cool. It's actually, again, when you talk about rarity, you got to be careful with what you deem to be rare. This car is for me, exceptionally rare. Um, because in North America, actually in the US, there was only about 400 of these cars released, uh, 422 with this option package back when it came out. That being said, it's now 30 years later since it's been released, a great deal of those have probably died. So there's probably only 200 in North America left in existence. And that's probably on the heavy side. This is also a five speed option car which they were both available in three-speed uh, automatic or five-speed. So you take away a third of those 200 cars left being maybe possibly automatic. And that leaves us with a car that only about 150 as optioned would still exist. And that brings it down to, and maybe it's even far less than that. Um, from all the research I've done, I've only seen a few pictures of these cars actually still around. I've seen pictures of them in junkyards, uh, unfortunately being scrapped and that sort of stuff. But seeing these cars actually still around is, is quite rare. Uh, and so anyway, the moral of the story is, is should I keep this car? Because this car is complete. Uh, not fully complete, but it's like 95% complete. Everything is there. It's a barn find. The car was parked for 10 years. Somebody uh, had done a bunch of work on it, parked it, and wanted to get to a point to restore the, or put the car back on the road. Didn't actually get there, was moving, sold it to the person I bought it for. This person bought it, left it in their garage for a year and a half, and then I came along. So it technically is more or less a barn find. It's covered in dust, it's dirty, it needs to be cleaned up. Uh, there's a couple things wrong with it, it hasn't ran in 10 years. Um, however, more or less everything that makes this car unique is there. So the question becomes, do I actually swap this car with a 1.8T and ruin its purity? You know, if you guys watch Mighty Car Mods, they talk about purity a lot and I think it's pretty funny. But the idea is, is, is this car rare enough to actually restore it and leave it as factory, factory optioned? So that way I could have a car on this channel that is basically a collector um because it would be a collector car it's it's old enough it's also rare enough to be worth uh being a collector should i do that or should i essentially ruin the purity of this car by 1.8t swapping it i'm okay with either option but once i show you the guys the car on the next next episode i really want your guys's opinion of what you think i should do with it i'd like you to throw it down in the comments because it becomes a moral battle is as a uh, true Mark One enthusiast like I am, owning a Mark One that is rare or rarer on the rarity scale, um, would you keep it factory, 100% factory as optioned, and keep it clean and make it a collector, or would you motor swap it and essentially ruin the purity of it? Because this car, I've never seen another one in person. I know they exist, but they were never offered in Canada. It was only in the US. 
and I'm in Canada, so this car coming up to the States or coming up to Canada from the States is even rarer. Uh, this might be one of a handful of cars in Canada for real. Um, so, so this could be a thing that could turn into a collector car restoration type sort of thing. Um, or is it, let's just wreck it, uh, it's purity and just live as a true Volkswagen enthusiast, put the 180 in it, or should I save that for another car? Um, that's the quandary I'm in right now. And I want you guys to be able to help me out. But end of the story, super excited. I bought the car, super clean, next to no rust on it, fairly complete, awesome car, going to be a great addition to the channel either way as a collector or as a motor swap candidate. Um, I'm super excited about it. I was so happy I even had to message some friends and say, hey, you know, check out this car I just got. Uh, look how cool it is. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, there's a decision to be made in this channel moving forward. I also picked something else up, which I want to show you guys now. So as you guys know, in previous episodes, I've talked about how I want to turn my VR6 car into more of a street monster. Now I use that street monster reference uh, lightly, uh, I realize the, how, how corny that sounds, but I want to make it a performer. More of the story. And a friend of mine locally had uh, some wheels and tires for sale that I've hummed and hawed about for probably a good month. Uh, we ended up coming to an agreement and I went and picked them up. I went out and grabbed the VR, a set of slicks. So super excited about that, but I wanted to show you guys the commitment that I have to make this car a street performer. I'd love to take it to the drag strip this year. Uh, I'd love to take it to some track days this car is going to get used and it's going to get used pretty hard so um, when we start doing changing up the brakes and start changing up a lot of the performance we'll change out the suspension we'll start improving this car drastically for a track preparation type car uh, whether that's drag strip whether that's uh, street and strip where we're taking it onto the street a little bit more often or we're taking it to uh, a, a track to use as a track day car uh, nevertheless this car will be uh, built that way and here's a fun little step in the right direction is getting a set of slicks for it so thanks very much for watching today, you guys. I really do appreciate it. I realized there was a ton of talking today and today is supposed to be an episode for uh, Project Stepchild. So I wanted to give you guys a solid update on that car, know what's going on. Um, I know it sounds like it's gonna be a couple episodes until, because we're gonna release the new car next episode. There's gonna be a couple episodes before we get back on it. But don't forget, it's only two episodes away. It'll be next week. We're back on that car, working hard. In the meantime, I got a lot of stuff I wanna accomplish here. Uh, off camera to kind of get ready to gear into the next cars that are coming in um, to the mystery garage from viewers of the channel as well as friends and that sort of stuff we got lots of projects on the go as well as our own cars from the channel we'll also get to work on so tons of stuff right around the corner i just need a little bit of breathing room to get everything ready so thanks very much for for coming through this chat and talking about what's going on uh it's a lot of fun as you guys can see here i'm working my way on my goal we got a caddy truck uh, or the Volkswagen pickup truck, depends on, on what you want to call it. Uh, Jetta, we've got the slick top VR6. And over on the other side, I want to continue to have uh, the other cars we're missing from the Mark 1 platform. I think that would be a lot of fun. But thanks very much for watching, you guys. I really do appreciate it. Wait till we release the new car on next episode. Till then, take care.